teaching. Teaching never changes. Or does it? The lesson plan has changed. Today, one of our most important men went MIA on a research mission. He carries the intel to SCF-232. If it falls into the wrong hands, we don't know what could happen. We do not have full intel on SCF-232. What we know is that critical scientific information is at hand about genetics. Although hopefully, we'll find out. Us or else. But sir, we are recording. Oh, hello children. What you see here is not an interrogation room. It is just a lesson plan room. SCF-232. The student knows that the variation in each species is due to the exchange and interaction of genetic information that as it is passed down from parent to offspring. The way people write out dominant and recessive genes is that one of them gets a capital letter, which is a dominant, and the recessive one gets a lowercase letter. Um, some people, so for eye color, brown would be a capital B, which is what most people have. It means it's dominant, which is what you see. And then may maybe blue is recessive, which could be the lowercase b. It, it is shown directly as a capital B and a lowercase b, or two lowercase b's if you have blue eyes. Sometimes, Two recessive traits make a new dominant genotype. And also, in the case of animals, people select breed their animals to get certain traits out of them. This is called selective breeding. The blue version of the eye color gene made a pigment. Then you'd get some mix of brown and blue. There are some cases like this for people. One of the easiest to understand is hair. There are two hair type genes, curly and straight. If you have two copies of the curly version, you have curly hair. And if you have two copies of the straight hair version, you have straight hair. Homozygous means a word describing when two alleles are both uniformly dominant. And heterozygous means when its genes are two different traits. You can see the pairs above to show which one's which. What kind of hair do you have if you copy both of each? Wavy. Let's pretend curly is capital C, capital C. And straight is capital S, capital S. You get capital C, capital S. Capital C, capital S is wavy. The way to find out what chance if you might have blue eyes or brown eyes and also is by calculating the recessive and dominant genes together. The way to do this is a Punnett square. The graphic I'm showing is a Punnett square, which is a four square basically showing the capital letter C, capital letter C, the lowercase letter S. Curly and straight hair are examples of this. So when you have C and S together, you have wavy hair. And the Punnett square shows which chance you might have either curly, straight, or wavy. Using a Punnett square, you can basically just count each selection. For example, if I wanted to know curly, I'll just count the CC, and then, since it's one out of four, you have a 25% chance. And do this for whatever combination of letters you need to do so in order to find the chance. Versions of genes are often dominant because the recessive version actually does nothing. In the eye color example, of the brown version of the gene makes a pigment that turns your eye brown, but the blue version does not make a blue pigment. Instead, it makes no pigment, and an eye without pigment is blue. Genes are passed through reproduction. How are with asexual plants or beings? Genes don't really compete against each other. There's usually no change on the offspring of either plant. Again, this does not take into fact that evolution or natural selection at all.
you